It's Magical Girl time! Hello and welcome to another figure review. Today we're gonna have a look at the figure number 026. It's Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoa Strikers Hayate Yagami in the Night Armor version. Bruh, what's up with these tiles? This is another one of the Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoa series which I picked up pre owned from Amiyami at a reasonable price because it looks cool. Has a bunch of cool accessories. There's a lot of gold. I really like the color combination and the scepter she comes with. So, let's have a look at it. And now, it's time for the main event of the evening. Because if you look at my Shaman review, this figure is definitely being favored by Good Smart. Let's have a look at the size. She stands at about 12 and a half centimeters to the top of her hat, which means we are going up to five inches, a little, little tiny bit shorter than five inches. For your size comparisons, here's Jolter, SH Figure Arts Sailor Moon Crystal, and here's the only other Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoa Strikers figure I own. And Dark Side. For the overall design, I gotta repeat what I said in the Shama review, and that's probably the reason why I picked these figures up in the first place. I'm getting kind of like a fate, more like a uh, type moon vibe from this entire outfit with the puffy shoulder pads, the rope, and the plated armor on the sides. Just me, but anyway. Look and detail of the figure, the face is gorgeous. I love the black and blue in the eyes. And then he had some gold on the side of the hair. There's actually a lot of gold in the figure. And with the gold comes the bleeding, unfortunately. The big puffy shoulder pads have some bleeding on this side. It uh, also completely hits the mark on some places. Looks uh, a lot better on the other side. But unfortunately they only hit the mark on one, I guess. Chest area has this soft plastic jacket which actually hides some fairly nice boobage but also hides some more bleeding in the white over there and also the uh, gold line is absolutely not clean. It looks like it's going over the line on both sides. Yikes. And I mean there's some more bleeding throughout the figure unfortunately on the sleeves. It's not too bad but it is noticeable. And then we add some more prom in the gold. Why is the gold always like on the right side a lot more ugly than it is on the left side? Enough about that. You have this entire rope piece which is not connected so it doesn't get in the way of your articulation. But it's also kind of annoying of how floppy it is. You can, the best thing I figured out is just to pull it down so it does somewhat stay in place. But uh, yeah, it just, just flops around as I'm handling the figure and that's not pleasant. That is Joe, just a minor complaint as we're going down to the skirt, which is soft plastic, so it's Ponzu time! Waggler White Ponzu, nothing too special, but it is there, and I have to show it because I'm contractually obligated. That is not true, but I'm just making stuff up as I go. We got some bare legs, a little bit of fan service if you're into that, and the shoes with some more gold axes, which for the most part seem to be painted nicely enough, so yeah, I mean overall, it's a cute kind of magical girl with a little bit of armor here and there and big puffy shoulder pads for whatever reason. The articulation is the most standard stuff I've seen for Figma's. Hat moves forward, moves to the back, does tilt side to side, oh so slightly, and goes all the way around. Shoulder articulation, you have a ball hinge in the chest area and another one in the shoulder, but because of the puffy shoulder pads it doesn't really go up all that much and those are indeed hard plastic what the hell you should have a bicep swivel in here but it is completely frozen on this side i do get a little bit on the other side but i'm not willing to force it much more and break it off simple ball hinge in the shoulder which also has some room to rotate Especially on the forearm, you got a simple hinge on the hand, moves up, down, rotation all the way around. The chest area is surprisingly nimble, goes back, forward, does tilt side to side, and it doesn't really go all the way around. You get it to all the way to the side though, so it's not bad by any means. The lower hips can be wriggled around a little bit back and forth and have some side to side movement. The leg moves forward, they cut up the skirt, but the plastic still kind of holds it back goes out to the side as much as this hard plastic piece lets it and same for the backwards movement it really gets blocked by this have some rotation in the leg simple ball hinge in the knee and the foot is on another ball hinge back forward does tilt side to side very nicely because they left a lot of room for it 
Fool your accessories. Let me get the boring stuff out of the way first. You got the Figma bag included with every Figma ever. You got the Figma base with uh, the old school Figmas. I don't have like an extra piece to pop on the front, but the rest of it is the same. Hinge, 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 hinge. And then you got my favorite part of this one, the wings. Because this is another thing of uh, if you're a fan of combining old accessories with like, newer Figmas or just combining this accessory with any other Figma, you can. Because you just slide this through the base and then you put the other one part in the back and there you go. You have wings for every Figma you ever wanted. I uh, also like how they did it that it's like see through over here and then you have it dark in the uh, on the tips obviously. It's nice and shiny, it looks clean, it looks good, it's kind of sharp. But it also, I would be very careful not to break it off because it is very thin. Also, big fan of the staff. Kind of have a bunch of crosses on there. The paint is surprisingly clean for the accessories. A lot cleaner than it is on the figure, which is just... <sighs> Speaking of which, here's like a book. Like, look at the small detail on there and look how nice it's molded and painted on there. You have like the open version of the book, doesn't have anything inside. And you have the closed version of the book has the exact same stuff on there, but damn, does it look good. Wow. Then you have one other face, like a yelling face, going into battle or whatever. It looks, it looks kind of just like, she doesn't really look angry, it's just like, ah, no, please don't. I don't know. Just standing out the front hair piece with this pack on top of it. It is to connect it to the head if you want that. Just kind of pack that in there. Whoops, can't really do it. Also, paint on this one is, uh, I mean, it's awful in there, but you're not gonna see that, so that's fine, I guess. And then for the hands, finally, you got two fist hands, two open holding hands with the hinge in there, and then just kind of one folded hand, a pointy finger, and this other open hand for posing. And then you have another holding hand, which doesn't have a hinge, so it does help with stability. And I think it's angled also, the other one was straight, so that's pretty nice. But anyway, those were the accessories that you get with this figure. And I'm gonna go real quick back to the accessories that we got with Shamal, which are intended for this figure, for Hayate, which is just weird. Uh, but looking, by the, looking at this, I think this is just another version of Hayate, probably like a super mode, because she looks exactly the same, just like has completely clear blue eyes and uh, is blonde. So it's probably, I'm guessing like a super mode, if you guys know in the comments, let me know. And then you also have like the same hair piece with the hat on it, so you can combine those. And you have this little fairy, whatever, familiar character type was with Shamal but is intended for Hayate. These things are not included with the Figma, but they're included with another one which I just reviewed the other day. So go back and watch that one. And yeah, that's the accessories. Final thoughts. This figure rocks. I really love the design, as I mentioned like a billion times, so I'm gonna stop saying that now. The articulation is acceptable. I mean, it is an old Figma. It is a really old Figma. I wish the paint job was better. That's really my only gripe with it is Ugh, the bleeding in the gold. I wish it was good, but that's quality control issues. Some copies will end up like that, and that's probably one of the reasons why this one is a pre-owned one that was sold at a very low price point. So as such, even in that regard, I can't even complain too much. I love the accessories, I love the staff, I love the wings, and uh, everything about the accessories, at least, is very nicely painted, weirdly enough. Also, if you're considering all the accessories you got with Shamal, this is like a DX version, which is probably what it should have been, but I guess back in the day, the idea of doing Figma DX figures wasn't their thing. So they slapped everything on with Shamal. I'm not gonna count that into the uh, the overall uh, rating of this figure, but I'm just saying, it's it's also completely dumb luck on my part, because I just bought Shamal and uh, Hayate together, having no idea about this. I had zero idea that 90% of Shama's accessories were meant for Hayate. Final thoughts, I do like this figure and I will recommend it if you're in the mood for some magical girl with some cool accessories, the wings, the staff, whatnot. I mean, also stuff that you can put on basically every Figma if you like to swap parts. If that's your thing, then go for it. That's gonna do it, guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever Hayate Yagami wants clean paint.